Lots of ground will be covered in this episode. Here we'll take a look at the Bitcoin chart. We discussed the possibility of Bitcoin's value falling in the day's first video. The RLUSD and its possible effect on the Bitcoin price will be discussed in further detail below. We will end our talk after that. We can make a chart easily. We should hold off till XRP reaches $1 in price. I assure you that the release of XRP is imminent. Eventually attaining $1 in 2025 without further ado. Get comfortable, I'll explain everything. Ethereum, which has 8,836 Bitcoin in circulation, is currently selling at $2,440, a 0.5% increase over yesterday. It is currently down 1.19% in USDT. Given that USDC is arriving at 99 XRP is a major loop 50. The current market capitalization of cryptocurrencies is $315 billion, or 1% of the total $2 trillion. What is our next move? Right away, I will let you know. We will discover the outcome once today concludes, but we are already aware that I bought Quant. I talk a lot about Quant on the live shows. On Mondays, I purchase Quant. I am completely transparent with you. Tell me what I'm up to. When I finish my assignments, I promise to let you know. As soon as you buy Quant, we can go on. My dollar cost average was somewhere between $73 and $75 right now. In spite of his Quant subreddit post, Gilbert Verding stressed a few things, including the fact that the firm is putting enterprise adoption ahead of community-driven token excitement. I think it's great that he made it clear that Quant isn't an investment token, but a utility token, and that users should stick with their goals for the future instead of selling and going elsewhere. Very interesting things. An incredibly bold assertion was made by him. We can look at how it affects the project. We are cognizant of the fact that it serves as a utility token. If there is value, the price will go up. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how much there is. Whether prices go up to $11,000 or just go back up to their all-time high is the question. A bull market is presently underway. Striking a balance somewhere around $400. A resurgence is imminent, as the saying goes. After Bitcoin, Binance, and CZ, things will start to look up. Well, would you believe it? In response to the SEC's actions, Binance is taking further action. Some buyers still hold out hope for value appreciation, thus even with the SEC's amended attitude, most Bitcoin transactions are still considered securities. This includes resales on secondary marketplaces. The attorneys for Binance and former CEO CZ have moved to dismiss the amended complaint that was just filed by the SEC. The SEC is putting a lot of pressure on us, and we're going to find out that having CZ is advantageous. By most accounts, he was one of the more upstanding citizens of his day. You know the good when it comes to cryptocurrency, he stated again and time again. Being unattractive or terrible was of no concern to him. I presume he was being truthful with you? The original target range for Bitcoin is 102,000 to 112,000. Tell me the way. It is simple. Maintaining a weekly and three-day support level of 66,000 is crucial for Bitcoin throughout the upcoming downward trend, in my opinion. I would prefer that Bitcoin not fall below 66. We began at the bottom, and no one wants to see that. About 65 is the target. From this point on, we expect a push and a subsequent bounce. We may even witness a minor mini pump from this point forward, contingent upon the outcome of the elections. When it comes to cryptocurrency, he reminded us that we are still within the HTF support zone, which spans 65 to 65 to 69,000. It is clear that there is a lot of interest and demand for SL, as you mentioned. Wix utilizes this chart to forecast when Bitcoin will break out and reach another all-time high. My current market outlook is very positive, as I indicated in the first video. Everyone will be even more optimistic if Trump wins the election today, as is occasionally expected. When people get bullish, they start to sell their long holdings, which is bad for the cryptocurrency market. All long positions are subsequently liquidated, as one would expect, therefore reducing the cost. Personally, I think that Bitcoin will see a small pullback before the next parabolic surge, when the general public will start to notice RL, provided that we do not witness a breakout above 74,000. Everyone is now actively participating in the USD market, which is a major milestone. A report from CNBC states that Ripple stablecoin will be launched by the year's end. Considering that, it is a notable step. 
If you remember back to Swell, Ripple was going to unveil it there, but they couldn't get the necessary approval. They hope to debut their stablecoin in time, as reported by CNBC, because they expect to receive clearance in the next 60 days. Stay focused when you're in Sin City. Attendees at this year's flagship payments conference heard from industry heavyweights about the industry's potential. The talk of the year has been stablecoins, a kind of cryptocurrency whose value has recently matched that of the US digital dollar. The possibilities for 2020 are what really pique my interest in this money. Everyone is talking about fintech and the stablecoin industry this year. Technology and finance integration has now achieved a major milestone and all of them are focusing on it. Each individual that took part. All play an active role in it, big and little. It's hard to believe that stablecoins will settle more than Visa for the first time this year. Cryptocurrency and stablecoins in particular, in my view, have recently experienced explosive growth. Most people don't realize how big the stablecoin market is, or the profound influence of cryptocurrency, so when we tell them, they often have aha moments. Remind them that 600 million individuals are currently making use of cryptocurrency. Just one week ago, Stripe debuted, and the concept of using cryptocurrency is what gives it life. Speculation has claimed that the $70 billion fintech giant Stripe will be able to diversify its payment methods by investing $1.1 billion to acquire a trustworthy coin infrastructure company. Visa and MasterCard are the most widely used payment processors, as well as those that employ stable coins but impose a fee on each transaction to Stripe. A transaction can take place almost instantly and cost less than a penny. Notable people in the Bitcoin business have taken note of this payment system, and it has been gaining popularity. Earlier this month, Visa unveiled the Visa tokenized asset platform VAP, which would pave the way for banks to launch their own stable currency. Ripple, a huge blockchain business, is launching its own stablecoin. Legacy companies were quick to jump on the bandwagon for PYUSD and BitGo, two US dollar peg tokens created over a year ago by both companies in an effort to cash in on the new technology. The leading fintech companies, including as Stripe, PayPal, Visa, and others, keep their prices stable because currencies connect cryptocurrencies to traditional financial institutions. Passionately advocate for the use of us stablecoins, it is still to be determined whether the major credit card companies will also apply for stablecoins, although it is certain that they will. Do you know what's really important, Sue? This taught us that stablecoins will eventually outnumber credit cards in terms of transaction volume. Players on the Stella network are currently using a trustworthy coin for money transactions. USDC on account of that one vital element. We are cognizant of the fact that they used MasterCard to place a bid for Earthport through an intermediary. We are aware that American Express also made inroads into the Chinese market via Ripplet, a node in the network that has been operational.